Two years ago, jazz became a welcome addition to the BBC Young Musician family. It was an amazing night in Cardiff, some really exciting new talent on show. And at the end of a thrilling final, 17-year-old saxophonist Alexander Bone was named as the first ever winner of the Jazz Award. Tonight, we're expecting another dazzling display of jazz musicianship as five more of the UK's finest step into the spotlight. Welcome to the final of the BBC Young Musician Jazz Award. Every year, the musicians are getting so great, so young. It's wonderful and scary. <laughs> Such enthusiasm, passion and high technical skill. It's just very, very exciting. Young musicians have always been a really big inspiration and to have a jazz one is so important. I'm just looking forward to seeing them taking some risks, having fun. I just want to see a good performance. The young musicians who are taking part in this competition have come to show their musical standard, which is extremely high. It's lovely to have the opportunity for people to see what brilliant music these young musicians can make. The experience of playing in the final was one of the best experiences of my life, to be honest. The atmosphere of the night and then playing with a band as amazing as Cruel Industry was just really magical. Yes, it was quite a night and we'll be hearing Alexander later. He'll be back to play for us while the judges are making their decision. Now, before we begin this year's jazz final, I want to welcome a man of many talents, jazz singer, songwriter and pianist, Joe Stilgo, who'll be keeping me company this evening. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, Josie. It's fantastic to be here in Cardiff. In fact, I remember at the final two years ago and being completely bowled over by the quality of musicianship. So I'm really excited to be here this time. And I'm looking forward to hearing some great jazz performances and probably feeling completely inadequate <laughs> at the yes, same time. They are very special yeah. and very young. Now, all of tonight's finalists have already come through two tough audition rounds to reach this stage in the competition. The Jazz Award is for instrumentalists and singers aged 21 and under. Last November, some of the most promising jazz performers submitted DVDs to the competition. And from these, just 20 were selected for the second round live auditions. The judges were treated to two days of jazz performance featuring a wide range of styles and instruments. At the end of these live auditions, five performers were selected for this final. They are saxophonist and recorder player Tom Ridout. Really excited. I like to surprise people, give them things that they're not expecting. Elliot Samsom, the first of two pianists. I'm really pleased. I'm just amazed that I've got this far. Incredible, yeah. Really cool. Adding some family rivalry to this final, trumpet player Alexandra Ridout, Tom's younger sister. It's just incredible and playing with amazing musicians and everything's going on, it's so exciting. Our second pianist, Noah Stoneman. I think it's going to be really inspiring, especially playing jazz live. I don't think there's another female that can compare to it. And completing the lineup, saxophonist Tom Smith, who made it to the final two years ago. Really, really exciting to do all the rehearsals, exciting to hear what everybody else is playing. It feels like it's going to be amazing.
It's an exciting lineup. And a big night ahead for all five of them. All of our finalists tonight will have to play at least one of their own compositions and arrangements, and they also need to demonstrate their improvisational skills. Yeah. On stage with them, we are delighted to welcome back one of the finest jazz outfits in the UK, the Gwillem Simcock Trio. And I know the guys, they're astonishing musicians and also lovely gentlemen. So it doesn't get much better than that. It really doesn't. Well, the five finalists arrived in Cardiff just a couple of days ago, and they couldn't wait to meet up with Gwillem and the band. First, 17-year-old trumpet player Alexander Ridout. I knew they were amazing musicians because I've heard them play, but being there and being involved was just incredible. I up my game a lot, and every time I play with them, it just brings out a whole new side to my playing. But yeah, that'd be really good. Do we just try those four bars? Okay. Or just try ahead. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing bouncing off them and just being inside it is just great. So even on the night, you might exceed your own expectations of yeah, yourself. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. being in the moment and just sitting on top of the van, because you don't have to think about it. They're just there and give you so much support. And I'm really looking forward to the final just because of playing with them, really. Next, another member of the Ridout family, saxophonist and recorder player Tom Ridout, who is 21. They're fantastic. It's like you walk in and you play tunes that you've played before and it feels like they're brand new and you're better than you've ever been before. Because they're really happy to go anywhere or do whatever you ask them to do. There was a lot of asking, do you want this or do you want that? How big do you want us to play these hits? Uh, see, I don't mm -hmm. know. The beautiful down. thing about jazz is we all have different opinions. So if we suggest, oh, maybe you should do that, and they think, well, actually, no, we don't want to do that, because it means they've had to make an active choice. Following Tom, it's pianist Elliot Sansom, who's also 21. He replaces Gwillem in the trio, joining drummer James Madron and bass player Yuri Golubev. All yours. Oh. Nice try. They're such great players, and... They've given me loads of advice and they've, you know, spoken to me like a real musician. And... One of the things for me is trying to play as a band and play with the other guys. So I've just been trying to be conscious about hooking up with the drummer and making sure I'm listening to the whole band as opposed to myself, you know. It's much more about playing as a unit. What's it like for you taking Gwillem's seat in the trio? It's incredible, I mean, to be sitting in with his band. It was, kind of, it was like 90% sort of in, in the groove, but it was a tiny bit yeah, loose. It's fantastic to hear someone play the same instrument as you do. The way that I've been trying to mentor them is exactly the same as I've tried to mentor the people that I've actually been playing with. Being the piano player in the trio, he understands my point of view and perspective. So, yeah, incredible. Next, it's Tom Smith, the second of two saxophonists in this final. Now 20, he's back to make a second bid for the title, having reached the final in 2014. What have you most been looking forward to about coming back? The main thing has been playing my compositions. Um, in my set, I'm playing two original pieces. I've had so much fun rehearsing them with the band. They've just had totally different ideas that I hadn't thought about. That's been a really, really nice experience. Most of the time, I'm trying not to think about specific ideas. I'm trying to think about what it is they're playing and how I can best respond to them. Last to meet the band and the youngest performer in this final, 15-year-old Noah Stoneman. <laughs> as well as playing piano, he's chosen to end his set on the organ. 
Play from play from C for me once. Because obviously as a piano player, he's given me loads of instrumental advice, my own stage presence, and how to kind of make the performance more exciting. Okay. I think your idea is great, but we might just have to yeah, scroll it out. So yeah. So no, you know so how it's my it goes. Fault I was far from intimidating. It was really, they were really welcoming and took on all my ideas. They understood everything I wanted to do. So you're getting a lot of stuff. You can use moving forward as a jazz musician way beyond the competition. Yeah, of course. I mean, all this advice that I'm getting is not just for this week, it's for life. It must be really amazing as an experience for these young finalists to work with musicians of the calibre of Gwillem and his band. Yeah, well, in a way, that's a prize in itself. Not only the competition, but just to work with them, almost to do a little gig with mm. this incredible world-class trio. And, of course, rehearsals are one thing, but putting on a great performance in front of a packed house and with all the pressure of a big competition like BBC Young Musician Jazz Award is something else. And sitting right in front of them, some of the biggest names in jazz. On the panel tonight, saxophonist, composer and band leader Tim Garland. It's going to be a given that they're going to be very good at their instrument technically. So what I'll be looking for is something beyond the notes, a deeper kind of narrative, almost like a storytelling quality, I guess. Pianist, composer and winner of the piano category at the 2015 British Jazz Awards, Zoe Rahman. Self-expression, I think, is quite important. That's a big aspect of what jazz is and how they rise to the occasion. One of the most innovative trumpeters on the jazz scene, Byron Wallen. The music is also about cherishing the tradition, so I'll be looking for that. Who's really digging into, you know, the heritage of the music? Composer, producer and jazz singer Gwyneth Herbert. I'm going to be looking for how far they are willing to take risks and a flair that's not just about showmanship, but that's also about an ability to communicate. And chair of the jury, legendary composer, band leader and pianist, Julian Joseph. I want to see, are they imaginative? Are their improvisations interesting? Are they communicating? So these are all the elements, but I think for somebody to really stand out, all the elements are gonna be transcended into music. That really is quite a lineup. Joe, we're about to hear the first of our finalists, and they're gonna treat us to some great music tonight. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I especially can't wait to hear their take on music by the likes of Miles Davis, Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, some of my heroes. Uh -huh. And also, uh, we're going to hear some of their own compositions, which should be really intriguing. Everyone's raring to go. And to kick off the final, it's our eldest competitor tonight, 21-year-old saxophonist Tom Ridout. Saxophonist Tom Ridout comes from a jazz-loving family. My dad's a guitarist and my mum used to play sax. I just grew up in a household where every waking hour music's been somewhere within something that I've done. It wasn't really a matter of coming to music, it was more a matter of that's what I wanted to dedicate my life to. Tom is now in his fourth and final year at the Royal Academy of Music. He's quite eclectic, his influence, and quite independent thinker. He seems not to worry too much what other people think. Maybe he does deep down, but anyway. So his pay playing reflects that. And the other thing about him is he's got this interest in playing the recorder. That was the first instrument he played. So he's one of the few people who's incorporating recorder into jazz. I started playing the recorder at home. My parents taught it to me before I even went to school, so it wasn't the go to school, learn recorder thing. It was learn recorder, go to school, wonder why no one else could play the recorder. At the academy, Tom has been developing new techniques with recorder virtuoso Pamela Thorby. With the recorder now, the technology's moved on so much further than it used to, so you can really enhance any tone that you want to make on it. You can play with pedals, you can put other effects on it, and in a way the recorder is perfect canvas for that. 
Musically, I play different saxophones for different sounds. It's another palette of sounds to use. It's not something people expect, but then jazz isn't supposed to be something that people expect. Very warm welcome to the stage, our first musician, Tom Ridout. My first tune is a tune I wrote called No Excuses, which I'm going to play on soprano sax. I really like writing, so I feel that if I'm playing my own pieces, I'm putting myself forwards as who I am as a player more than necessarily if I'm just playing pieces by other people.
I'm going to move on now and play a tune by Wayne Shorter called Infant Eyes. Tom continues on tenor sax with his own take on the jazz standard Stella by Starlight, written by Victor Young. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. My last tune tonight is another tune that I wrote. Um, it's called Chain, and I'm going to play recorder on it. That's all. <laughs> it's not something that hardly any people play in jazz. You have to improvise differently on the recorder because of all the technical challenges of playing chromatically, but it gives me a really nice, different way to have my own sound. <laughs> Tom Riddup. I was very impressed by Tom. I felt he was very much in the moment. I enjoyed his sound and his sense of humor. I thought Tom's performance was a strong performance. Got good solid tone, plays rhythmically correct, and there's a, a sort of instrumental confidence that, that, that I appreciated there. I think it went all right. Well, it went as good as I could have hoped. There were some bits that we didn't go wrong, but it felt great. And if it feels great, that's that's the that's the bottom line. Fantastic start to the competition from Tom Ridd out there. We both were eager to hear him on the recorder. Did you know a recorder could do that? No. <laughs> Amazing sound, yeah. wasn't it? Lu using that, that pedal with all uh, his, his bag of tricks. Yeah. I mean, he, it, was a, it was an amazing performance. My favourite was him playing the tenor saxophone. I feel mm -hmm. that's when his true musicianship came through. Absolutely. Well, yeah. People were dancing in the seats. Great start. Yeah. Next, we've got Elliot Sansom, who takes Gwillem's seat at the piano. He's the first of two pianists in this final.
A fourth year student at the Birmingham Conservatoire, music has always played a major part in Elliot Sansom's life. From a young age, there was always a piano in the house. I used to always get at the piano from about four years old and try and improvise and play by ear. I think I knew that I always loved jazz. And then I started the main course here and got to study with John Taylor and John Turbo. You know, the one-to-one -one lessons are amazing. John Turville, one of the UK's leading jazz pianists, has been teaching Elliot for the past four years. You're gradually bringing the left hand into sort of bring, bring the two into play. He's like a sponge, really. His ears are incredible. He sort of absorbs everything he hears. His technique is great. There's a kind of a fluidity and an openness in his playing. He's developing his own voice now. At one point it can be quite exploratory, quite deep, and the next thing it can be very playful. He has this huge range of emotions that he can convey in a very short space of time, but in a very relaxed way, in a very effortless way. Elliot's already planning for his post-conservatoire future. For the past couple of years, he's been building a new recording studio in Birmingham with his brother Ollie. We've got a live room that we're in now, and we've got a control room and waiting room area and things like that. So we can run this as a professional recording studio, that's the plan. As musicians, it's really important and a great thing to have a space to work in, you know, and record our own music and compose. Mm. Yeah, we've always wanted to build a proper recording space that we could use. So. And here it is, sort of. <laughs> it's getting there. The first piece I'm going to be playing is a piece written by myself called Prelude, which was inspired by Paris. When I studied over there. And I hear your grandmother bought your socks, your lucky socks. Yeah, she did, it. she did. So I'm going to be wearing that. <laughs> <laughs>
now going to move on to play a piece by one of my favourite guitarists, Ralph Towner. This is Tremonto. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to finish with Solar, written by Miles Davis. Thanks.
Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Sampson. That was amazing. Elliot has a very classical sound and he was very generous with the rest of the band, giving them plenty of space. I'd love to have heard him do more solo piano. I thought he had a fantastic dialogue with the rest of the band. He really felt like a natural band leader to me. Oh, amazing. James and Yuri have just helped me so much and it's been so nice to play with them and get the chance to do that. Elliot is really putting himself out there. He's getting a lot of live experience. That paid off tonight. Yeah, you can tell he's very accomplished playing, very accomplished hat-wearing as well. Yes. <laughs> His playing was phenomenal, the way he played with the musicians on stage. You were well. looking forward to the Miles Davis. Did he put it off? Absolutely. It's a tricky tune, yeah. but he was, yeah, he was great. Fantastic stuff. So two of our jazz finalists have already staked their claim to the title. Still to come, the youngest performer playing tonight, 15-year-old Noah Stoneman and 20-year-old saxophonist Tom Smith. But first we're going to hear 17-year-old trumpet player Alexandra Ridout. She's the only girl to reach this final and is the younger sister of Tom who opened the show. Trumpeter Alexandra Ridout is in her first year at the Purcell School of Music. Purcell, the musical life is very busy. There's loads going on, it's amazing. And because everyone wants to do music, you can always be around musicians and there's always tons of ensembles and music going on at such a high standard. With jazz, I really love the connection you have with other players, which you really can't get as much in classical music. Because it's improvised, it's like the nature of the music. Being able to do that is really cool. Ready to record? Alexandra enjoys a broad musical education at Purcell, including lessons from one of the UK's leading jazz trumpeters, Steve Waterman. The first time I heard her play, I was absolutely knocked out with what she could do. She already had quite a, a lot of maturity, in not only in her playing, but also in an improvisation. Even weekends at home are no escape from music. In my family, we have a lot of, like, jams just at home. I'm just really lucky to have musician parents that know what they're doing. <laughs> Well, Alex playing the trumpet, she in fact asked one day, Mum, can girls play the trumpet? <laughs> uh, yes, of course. <laughs> she wasn't so keen on jazz because that was our music. And it wasn't until she did a National Youth Jazz Collective course one summer, she came back and said, actually, I really like jazz. <laughs> <laughs> It's a passion she shares with her older brother, Tom, who opened this final. Having my brother in the final is kind of weird, <laughs> but it's also really cool. I mean, it would have been weird if one of us didn't get through. I mean, it, it wouldn't have been weird, but it would have been a bit awkward. <laughs> it's odd to be up against my sister, but I suppose there's nothing I can do about that now. Uh, no, there's not been any rivalry. Yeah, he's really, like, supportive of me getting through as well, so it's really nice. Please welcome to the stage Alexandra Ridout. I'm not fussed about winning at all, but, I mean, it'd be cool, but I'm not, like, thinking about that at all. The best opportunity of my life, really. Oh, I'm so excited.
Thank you. Um, that was a piece called Yesterday's by Jerome Kern, and I'm going to continue with an original composition of mine called Buttons. At the time I wrote it, my friend's cat died, my best friend, and it was called Buttons, and it had three legs, and my tunes in three, so I thought it would kind of fit. It's kind of a tribute to her cat. <laughs> My third piece is by Herbie, and it's called Sunriser, and it's off his solo album, The Piano. And I'm doing that duet with Gwillem, so that'll be really nice.
my final tune is Golden Lady by Stevie Wonder. I hope you enjoy. The first phrase she played, a really sweet, soulful sound, I think that was the first thing that struck all of us. It was really great the way that she reacted with the band. I felt that she was really enjoying it and uh, it felt like a breath of fresh air, really. It was amazing when I got the response after my first tune even. I was like, kept me going, so it was really good, yeah. 
Alexander's set went down a treat in this hall. I was really feeling the synergy between her and the band. Yeah, me too. And I love the way she ended with Stevie Wonder. Really mm. raised the spirit. Yeah. The mastery of the instrument and her stage presence was great. She was terrific. And her Herbie Hancock totally changed the atmosphere in here, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, she really chose her pieces well and played brilliantly. Yeah. So, three down, two to go. And remember, you can watch all of tonight's complete performances on our website, as well as an extended interview with the chair of the jury, Julian Joseph. Next up, the second of our pianists in this final and the youngest competitor this evening, 15-year-old Noah Stoneman. Both my parents are musicians, and about around age six, we got a grand piano and then I think I eventually got some piano lessons in school. And then from there I realised how much I'd rather do jazz than classical. Rich and I are not great jazzers. No, we've never played jazz and we have no idea where it comes from or how he does it. It's all a mystery. Yes. <laughs> I think piano is a very unique instrument to play solo. You're kind of the band and the soloist at the same time. So it can be quite overwhelming at times with so much to do, but it's a great freedom to play solo piano. For the past five years, Noah has been a member of numerous musical ensembles organised by the Haringey right. Music Service. Well, he's very, very laid back. He doesn't seem to be flustered by anything. He's actually totally focused on getting the most out of the musical experiences we can give him, which is, is fantastic for us, of course, because we just keep throwing stuff at him. And at the weekend, Noah attends the Royal Academy Junior Jazz. And sure. <laughs> That's like my favourite part of the week. It's just playing music that I love, loads of great people and great musicians. He's one of those guys that's got all the skills in place and then plus that natural kind of, you know, un unknown factor where he, he loves to um, stretch out and go into these uncharted territories in his solos and I love that, you know, he's always exploring new things. Just playing music with, like, your friends, I can't think of anything better in my life currently. Our fourth musician, Noah Stoneman. Well, the first piece I'm playing is Elsa by Earl Zinders. And even though he wrote it, it was, it was made famous by Bill Evans, who's one of my all-time musical heroes.
Noah's set also included Irving Berlin's How Deep Is The Ocean? Next, we're going to hear his own piece, Behind the Sky. Presumably you've composed quite a bit. Why, why was that the one that was best going to yeah, showcase I've, you? Yeah, I had a few tunes. This was a slightly more kind of modern sounding piece, I guess. And James and Yuri are fantastic contemporary players. They gave me loads of great ideas on how to give a bit more shape. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that's all going to come through. I'm now going to bring on the guy that's been the most fantastic mentor to me and all us finalists all week. And we're going to play one of my favourite standards called The End of a Love Affair with me on organ and Mr. Gwillem Simcock on piano.
I mean, you could tell from the outset he had a lovely sound on the piano, very Bill Evans, basically. You can tell he was an influence from the start. And, yes, yeah, so when he moved over to the organ, you know, great. I thought Noah played really, really well. He's sensitive. Um, there's a great sense of melody going on. I would say that he is growing into his true musical self. You completely forget the competition, you know, there's no pressure or anything. It's a bit nerve-wracking with the, the whole audience and stuff, but really fun, really kind of exhilarating. Yeah, he's pretty talented, isn't he? <laughs> I can't believe he's 15. I'm uh, going to check his passport. Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> uh, I'm scared. I'm scared about him. He's too yeah. good. Uh, yeah, it reminded me of Bill Evans. Mm -hmm. um, is one of his great influences. Also Keith Jarrett. So many, and Michel Petrucciani, the great French pianist. Uh, so many brilliant jazz musicians. And that last piece was completely different to the rest mm -hmm. of the set, and it really, I think, got the crowd bopping away. Absolutely. They loved him. And so we come to our last performer in this BBC Young Musician Jazz Final. If you're watching the show two years ago, you may well recognise him. It's 20-year-old Tom Smith. Saxophonist Tom Smith is in his second year at the Royal Academy of Music. I've decided to try for it again. It was such a fun experience. You get um, the chance to play with Gwilym, you get a chance to hang out with all these other competitors, you get to hear all this amazing music. It was an amazing night. Everyone in the audience was so hyped up, energetic, in such a good mood. It was one of the best crowds to ever get to play to, really. Two years on, and Tom has thrown himself into college life. He's got a fantastic sound, and that's something that's developed over the last year and a half, particularly, you know, it's just this personal sound. We've been working on his composition, arranging with him. He's got a hell of a lot together already. He's running his own septet now. That's the bit that's rare, I think, to actually have something to say, as well as something to say it with. Tom formed the septet in order to play his own arrangements and original compositions. It's lovely to hear other people playing your music. Firstly, because everything always sounds totally different to how you expect it to, but almost always it sounds about five times better than how you think it will. By being around different musicians, you get different ideas of different music. There's nothing more important in jazz than to be playing all the time. So please, a wonderful round of applause for Mr Tom Smith. The fact that he gets to play with Gwilym Simcock Trio, you get to have 15 minutes set recorded and broadcast on TV. The competition part of it, it's cool that it's there, but really it's not the most important thing.
In the middle of my set, I'm doing two compositions back to back. The first is called Blackout. It's quite a brooding, intensive piece. I'm intrigued to see what people make of it. The third piece I'm playing is another composition called Atlas. It's a ballad, and it's meant to be quite an open sound. It's meant to be quite expansive and atmospheric.
thank you so much. It's amazing to play here, actually. It's so, like, it's so enthusiastic. It's such a nice vibe in the room. It's lovely. <laughs> and we're going to finish with uh, a piece called Fantasy in D, and it's by Cedar Walton. Yeah, so 
down. Even though he's using a fairly sort of standard vocabulary in the way that he plays, within that, I felt that he wanted to kind of push the boundaries and take a few risks. I was incredibly impressed by his compositions and also just generally a fantastic energy to his playing. It was just a fantastic crowd, I think, and the trio were just on fire. Amazing. Tom, he's quite a showman, isn't he? He's quite the showman, yeah, diminutive in stature, yeah. but the sound he makes is huge, very expressive player. Uh, I love the way he switched between the tenor and the alto and, the, and his style on both instruments was very different, so he showed his range and uh, his incredible skill on all four pieces. And he's huge fun to watch. Too. Yeah, he's great fun to watch. And the way he interacts with the band. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with him. OK, yeah. so now we've heard all our finalists. What are your thoughts? They were all really accomplished. And to play with a new band, to do all these things as if they've been doing it all their lives, but they're still only young musicians. I'm so pleased for all of them because it means so much to them yeah. to get to perform in the hall here and for you at home. The jury have left the hall to make their decision. And while we're waiting for that, we have a special treat. Alexander Bone was the first ever winner of this BBC Young Musician Jazz Award. And I was lucky enough to be here two years ago for that winning performance. He's been a busy chap since then, and he's back to play for us tonight. Before we hear him, let's find out what he's been up to since winning the title. I can't believe that I won it still. Like, it just feels weird to say that. It's just opened me up to so many new things within music that I wouldn't have been able to do. Alex is now in his second year at the Royal Academy of Music, but he's already worked with some of the biggest names in the music world. I got to do some work with Nile Rodgers. Nile Rodgers is about his legend. You know, people like Dave Holland and Leanne Cowell as well, and really credible jazz artists that I look up to and love. Being able to work in the same room with them and do gigs or whatever, it's just really incredible. One of Alex's most memorable gigs was playing to a bumper crowd at the Proms in the Park concert in Swansea. For me to play with the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, and that was just the most amazing experience. Like, the amount of power and almost natural energy you get from that many musicians backing you is really something else. When it comes to the future, I'm still very um, open-minded. There's so many different fields within music that I love, and I'm just kind of keeping all my doors open and just seeing what happens. And here is Alexander with his own composition, aptly titled Cardiff.
So good to have Alexander back with us tonight. He's quite a talent, isn't he? He really is. And we've also heard five more incredible young performers tonight. They're all gathered backstage waiting for the result. But before one is named winner of the 2016 BBC Young Musician Jazz Award, let's find out what the jury thought of their performances. Tom has a particular poise about him. I particularly like the soprano saxophone, very individual sound, and of course, the recorder. I was really impressed with Tom's performance. I loved the touch of the loop pedal in the recorder passages and a wonderful dialogue with the rest of the musicians. Elliot has a great point of view on the music. There are few things that he's working on that are in the process of development, and you can see and hear that. And that's what's really exciting about him as a pianist. His compositions were one of my favorites of the night. Just felt that improvising wise, he needed to allow things to develop a bit more. But I was really knocked out with him. Alexandra, she was just a joy to listen to. I thought she had complete command of her instrument. She had a real innate musicality and a musicianship. Alexandra was fantastic, just a real breath of fresh air. A real connection with the audience, but really with her material as well. It's really quite remarkable. I really loved Noah's phrasing and his sound. You could really hear that he's got the real Bill Evans influence. If he carries on doing what he does, he'll be a very strong musician. It's great to hear someone so young with a sensibility like that on the piano. To me, if he can get more authority and give the impression that he's leading the band a little bit more, I really look forward to hearing him in future years. Tom Smith, his original compositions were some of the best we heard tonight. He executed them with a, a sense of discipline and control that I was really impressed with. I really liked his composition, Blackout, and overall, yeah, he had a really nice kind of variety of sound. He played both tenor and alto, and he changed the sound depending on the piece, which I thought was quite interesting. Now we have five very nervous people waiting backstage, so I'm not going to delay things any longer. Please welcome to the stage our jury tonight, Tim Garland, Zoe Rahman, Byron Wallen, Gwyneth Herbert, and to announce the winner of the 2016 BBC Young Musician Jazz Award, Julian Joseph. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives us great pleasure to be here. It's a... Uh phenomenal to be part of a competition celebrating this great music. It shows us that the level and the interest and the enthusiasm for superb music making, whatever style, but particularly in jazz, is well and truly alive. We didn't by any means find this an easy decision. 
It was just about what is it that makes a jazz musician? And we found that our winner today just made us feel so wonderful about the music and it was just really enchanting. So I'm gonna look at my paper so I don't make any mistakes. <laughs> the winner of the BBC Young Musician 2016 Jazz Award is Alexandra Ridout. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. The Gwillems trio was amazing to play with them. That was like the highlight, really. Um, I had so much fun. Well deserved. Another round of applause for our <laughs> album. And, ladies and gentlemen, we mustn't forget our other wonderful finalists. Please welcome Tom Ridout, <laughs> Elliot Sansom, Noah Stoneman, and Tom Smith. fantastic night of jazz. Congratulations once again to Alexandra, the winner of the BBC Young Musician Jazz Award 2016. From all of us here in Cardiff, good night. We just enjoyed listening to her as a musician and that really came across. She brought a real sense of swing. It really perked me up. Just from the first note that she played, she had such a connection to her voice. And really, I think that that's what jazz should be able to do.